Hey guys, thanks for my name here. I got asked on YouTube by Nikki to show how the motion blur works. So what I've done is I've created a ball um, with a bone layer and two bones, one pin bone for the ball and a swing on the layer. I've got the keyframes here with Bezier, it's really simple, just two keyframes. And I've created five copies of it which I've offset at frame zero. So they're all the same. And I'm just gonna show you the settings for the new motion blur. The old motion blur doesn't use subframe motion blur. Um, so you want that on. And for now, I'm just gonna keep the frame count at two so we can see exactly what's going on. If I set this to 15, this one I'll set to, yeah, 50 will be fine. 75, I've already done this, so this one's on 100. So 100, 75, 50, and 15. And if I go to a place where there's the biggest bit of movement, I'm just gonna put a keyframe in there. So you can see this is the previous frame, this is the next frame. And the number two in the settings relates to how many frames are going to get rendered so if I just do a quick render of that, you'll see that only two frames, this one doesn't have anything on. These have all got two frames. So what it's doing is it's taking the previous frame and finding somewhere along that in between, um, that's why it's subframe uh, motion blur. And the number relates to how far away from, in percentage, from the previous frame, the current frame is. So if you look where where these are, pretty much at 100%, it's 50-ish um, percent from the previous frame. And then it gets closer and closer as you bring the, the um, number to a lower percentage. So it's, it's actually doing a lot less over here. Um, so what I'll do is, if I just export this video, uh, and I'll call it swing, I'll quickly export it from, so one thing to bear in mind is that the the render of sub-pixel um, motion blur takes frame zero into account if you start your render of, at one, so you're gonna end up with a weird ghost, see how here at frame one, or let's say frame two, um, I, you don't see any movement, and it goes forwards and backwards, and you end with no movement. Now, if I was to if I was to change that to frame one, because the frame zero position is there, if I was to render from frame one, I'd get a ghost on the first frame. So you want to avoid that. So just start your render from the second frame onwards, um, and obviously move your um, your animation accordingly, or just make sure that the frame before the one that begins is the same as the one that starts, and then you won't actually see any uh, any movement there. So I'm just gonna grab that video that I just exported, and I'll open it here with quick time. Um, I'll put it to loop so we can see what's going on. Okay, so this one has nothing. This one has very little, and increasingly it becomes more, more and more um, obvious that something's going on. Now this is quite nice. It may be a little bit too extreme. This is this is probably my favourite, um, but it's really a matter of uh, personal preference. What I'm going to do is increase now the count. So what that will do is, well, in theory, it will just add more frames between the two we saw previously, but in actual fact, it, it does more than that. Um, if I increase the frame count, say, to 10 on all of them, did I actually, no, it didn't, didn't save. I'm just gonna apply that. I should have kept the render from before, which I, I didn't, um, to compare them. But what you'll see is that the distance, which was around kind of halfway before, has increased here. Uh, so it's it's kind of compensating 
in some way. If you add more frames, it's not just taking the position with two keyframes being here and here and then filling them in. It's actually made this a little bit greater so to accommodate because of the difference in time and the motion based on how the ball is actually swinging. So this again you can see it's kind of you can see where the balls are in motion it probably won't be so obvious I'll just export a quick render of that um, you probably I'll show it to you again um, this is this is kind of new the be able, being able to choose now you can choose a folder before it used to um, have a, a weird dialogue that always started at the top level and you had to go through all the different um, fit folders that you've got set up so this time uh, in Moho 12 they've updated the export animation and there are other like the batch export uses this same kind of method um, anyway that's that's an aside I'm getting distracted here so let's call this swing 2 and export that now obviously because of the the number of in-between frames the render time is increased so if you increase it too much so you don't see any of that juddering at all um, your render times are going to to suffer a little bit but let's open this with with QuickTime. In fact, I'll open them both, and then I can show one and then the other. Uh, if I go to, let's say, here. Oh, where's it gone? OK. And then this one, I'll go to a similar time so you can see here um, that it has actually increased the the distance as I as I was explaining earlier it's increased the distance between the two frames and so it's got more of a more of the swing action to it um, and if we just play that back, I'll tell it to loop again. So this is something that we used to always export to After Effects and, and then add, um, add the motion blur using an external plugin. But this, is, this does a really good job now. Even the middle one's quite nice. Um, I still like this one, but it really depends on your character and, and the and the motion. But the fact that it's it's not just completely plain now, and before it was just a complete mess. So yeah, the smoother you want, the more frames you want. Um, you if you want to show more of the area uh, between the two keys, then you just need to increase the percentage um, and just shuffle those two settings until you're happy with the result all right so um that's it for now i hopefully kept it short i can't tell how long this recording is oh eight minutes um so it's not that short i'll sign off now and um let me know if uh if you have any questions cheers